everybody. Welcome to the uh, second edition of Tween Baking. This is my virtual video to help you guys bake along with me from home. Um, at this point, you should have your uh, recipe kits that you picked up. And as you can see, we're gonna be making some chocolate chip cookie bars. So it's kind of like the same idea as like a chocolate chip cookie, but like upgraded and it's, uh, you bake it in a baking sheet like this. Um, instead of like little individual cookies. Um, and it's really cool. It's kind of just like a different take on chocolate chip cookies, but it's just as good. Um, and they're really nice and chewy. So this is a great recipe. It's really easy and you guys have everything you need to do it. So I will walk you through step by step um, as I, as I uh, bake through this recipe and um, hopefully it helps you out a bit since I can't be with you there in person. So first I just wanna talk about everything that you got in your kit that you should have. Um, you should have a cup of all-purpose flour. You should have a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. Um, you should have a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. Um, six tablespoons of unsalted butter which we're gonna end up melting and I, I kept it, um, I didn't like melt it down for you first and then like re-chill it. I just kind of divided uh, your sticks of butter in some little containers here. You're gonna end up melting it down. I wouldn't melt it in these little plastic containers. I honestly don't know if they're microwave safe, but it was just my way of packaging it. So you'll, you're gonna wanna melt this down um, in a separate bowl, but you should have six tablespoons of butter. Um, you will need a half a cup of uh, brown sugar in your bag there. You should have one egg, uh, which I am including in this kit, individually packaged for your convenience. <laughs> and then you should have a teaspoon of vanilla. And lastly, um, oh no, wait, and sorry, you should also have a, a fourth a cup of white granulated sugar. So you'll have brown sugar and white sugar. And lastly, and most importantly, one cup of chocolate chips. Um, that's the best part. So I I made sure I did not forget that. <laughs> um, so in everybody's kit, you will also receive one of these disposable um, baking tins. So you don't need to use anything at home. This is the right size for this recipe. And then I'm also giving everybody a piece of parchment paper to line your baking sheet with. Um, that helps because uh, when you line it, once the um, the cookie bars are baked and cooled. We're gonna have our parchment paper inside like this and it just helps to like lift them out and then you can easily put them on like a cutting board or something and cut them. Um, it just makes everything a lot cleaner. The, it'll just help the, um, the batter not stick to the inside of this pan here. So that's everything. Those are all the ingredients, all the supplies. Um, at home, you're just gonna need a couple bowls. Uh, if you have a whisk or a fork, maybe a spatula, um, whatever works best for you guys at home. Um, I've got my little tools already here, but um, I'm just gonna go down the list of steps, step by step. And um, right now my oven is preheating at 325 degrees, so I always do that before I start my recipe. It just saves time, so you're not like sitting around waiting with this batter made, waiting for your oven to preheat. So. That's actually step one, preheat your ovens to 325 and you wanna put your oven rack at like the lower middle position. Um, it just works best for this recipe. So I've got that going, my oven's preheated and now we are going to start with step one. Okay, so step one, like I was saying, is you want to have your oven preheating at 325 uh, rack in the lower middle position and we want to um, make sure our parchment paper is going to fit in our pans. I gave everybody like a strip of parchment paper but you're probably gonna have to cut it down a little bit more so it better fits your pan and the when you cut it you actually want it to be long so the, the sides of it hang over your pan and I'll show you what I mean. That'll just help you after it's baked to pull up on the sides of the paper. It'll lift right out. So I've got my parchment paper here. I'm just gonna kind of Cut down the sides, make some cleaner cuts here. So I've got this kind of long rectangle now. And I'm going to put it in my little, I'll make sure you guys can see this part. I'm gonna put it in my baking tray here. And like I was saying, um, this side, these kind of flaps on the side here should hang over the edge. That is what we want. So we're looking for something kind of like this, okay? And if you need to cut the sides down a little bit more, you can. Like I said, I didn't make these too precise. I'll cut mine a little bit more just to clean it up a little bit. 
But this is parchment paper, so it's it's oven safe. You can put it, you know, in the oven. It's not gonna burn or anything like that. Um, okay. So this is what we're looking for. I'm now going to put this aside and we are going to move on to step number two. All right, you guys, step number two. In a medium bowl, whisk together flour, salt, and baking soda. So these are our dry ingredients. Um, I know sugar might seem like a dry ingredient, but sugar is normally, in recipes, it normally actually goes in with the wetter ingredients like the eggs, uh, the melted butter, that kind of thing. So don't worry about the sugar yet. Right now we're just going to mix our one cup of flour in a medium bowl here. We are going to do our salt, fourth a teaspoon of salt, which I have in here, and you wanna make sure you get that all in there. And we are going to do our baking soda, a fourth a teaspoon of baking soda. And we really wanna make sure when you pour that out that you get all of it out of there, no little bits stuck in the bottom. Uh, we don't want any of that baking soda to go to waste. It's very important so our cookie bars puff up a little bit and rise. Um, now we are going to whisk these. So I've got my handy dandy whisk right here. Like I said, if you wanna use a fork, if you have another tool you prefer to use, um, but whisking is really nice because it breaks up any of the clumps and the dry ingredients and it kind of evenly distributes the salt and the baking soda throughout the flour. Um, and it kind of like aerates the, the flour a little bit, just makes it nice and light, not so it's, it's not packed together, it's not too dense. All right, so that is nice and whisked. Dry ingredients are combined. Tap off any of the excess there. And now we are going to put this aside and we're gonna move on to step number three. All right, so step number three is in a large bowl, which I have right here, we are going to whisk together our melted butter, butter brown sugar, and our white sugar until combined. Uh, then we're gonna add in our egg and vanilla. Um, so to start off, before we do anything, I am going to put my butter in a microwave safe dish um, and I'm gonna go ahead and melt this and then let it cool down a little bit um, before I actually incorporate it in with the sugars. So um, like I said, yeah, I'm gonna just throw this in the microwave, melt it down. You don't want it like boiling hot or anything like that. So I'm just gonna bring this to a nice light melt um, and then we can move on to the rest of the step. All right, you guys, the butter is now melted and um, not bubbling hot, anything like that. Ideally, you probably want it at about room temperature. Mine's still a little bit on the warm side, but once I kind of mix it in with these sugars, um, it's going to uh, cool down a little bit more. So now I'm going to whisk together my melted butter, my brown sugar, and my white sugar. So melted butter is going in here into this larger bowl. Now we are going to put in our brown sugar here, which was a half a cup of brown sugar. We're just gonna dump it right in. And then we're also going to add our white sugar here, which was a fourth a cup of white sugar. Again, just dumping it, oops, dumping it right in, making sure we get it all out of the bag. We don't want any of that to go to waste. All right, so we are going to whisk these together. I've got my whisk here, um, and this recipe is really cool like because you don't, usually with chocolate chip cookies, you kind of need a, um, a mixer to like cream the butter and the sugar and all of that. Um, this recipe, we're just whisking it all together. The, the butter's already soft. I mean, it's beyond soft, it's melted, but we're mixing it right in with these sugars. Um, and it makes for really nice, chewy uh, chocolate chip cookie bars. So I'm whisking these together, making sure there's no clumps of sugar in there. There's no, you know, the butter's not like separated or anything. And I'm left with this kind of smooth, like creamy sugar butter mixture, just like this, okay? And you can see in there, there's no clumps. It's all kind of one consistency. So that's good, and um, because we are going to add an egg directly to this, that's another reason you don't want your melted butter to be, you know, super, super hot, uh, cause then it would cook the egg. So at this point, um, you can even feel it if you want. You don't want this mixture to be hot, um, kind of room temperature, and then you know you can add in your, what are we doing, the egg and the vanilla. So I'm going to take my egg, mix it, or crack it right into there. Beautiful, and then we are going to take our teaspoon of vanilla. Mm, smells very good. Dump it right in there also. Um, 
Okay, and then we're gonna whisk this together too. So you're gonna, I usually kind of break up my egg a little bit and then we can mix it all in. And again, you want this to be like one nice smooth consistency, no clumps in there, no chunks of anything. Um, you want the egg to be totally smooth and incorporated just like this. And you really don't have to whisk it too much. It kind of mixes together really easily. So just a couple seconds and then you could see it's it's this consistency here and that's what we want. A nice smooth, kind of semi runny consistency. All right, so this is still part of step number three. We've got this all combined. Um, now it's time to fold in our dry ingredients. So remember that uh, flour and baking soda and salt we whisked and put aside. Now we're gonna add that a little bit at a time. So um, with a rubber spatula, this is always like my favorite uh, baking tool. This one in particular, the shape of this one's really nice for scraping the bowl, but um, I love rubber spatulas. So you, I recommend using a rubber spatula for this stuff. Um, we are going to fold in our dry ingredients into this wet ingredient mixture. Um, when about halfway combined, we're gonna add our chocolate chips and then we're gonna continue to fold in. Um, and again, we're just doing it by hand. You don't, you don't need a hand mixer for this or anything like that. We're just going to do this very gently. We don't want to over mix it. Um, we still want the flour to be kind of light and fluffy in there, not, you know, not way over mix. It'll make it a little tougher if you over mix it. So I'm going to start off with about half of my dry ingredients here, rubber spatula, and I'm just going to kind of gently fold everything together, scraping the sides, taking the bottom of the mixture and kind of scooping it to the top gently this isn't a vigorous stir we're just gently folding everything um but just trying to make sure it is evenly mixed you don't want any massive clumps of flour in there or anything like that so i'm just kind of scraping the sides like that taking the bottom putting it to the top making sure everything's getting kind of smooth you can see it's it's kind of coming together in there all right so i'm gonna work on that for a second just scraping and folding like this. Okay. I'm going to add the rest of my dry ingredients now. We're just going to dump it right in there. Fold it some more. Get it nice evenly incorporated. No big chunks of flour. And before this is totally one smooth mixture, we are actually going to add in our chocolate chips. So I'm Still, it's gonna make a very thick batter. So if you're like, wow, this is gonna be, this is this is getting kind of thick, that's that's right, like that's how it's supposed to be, so don't worry. <laughs> It'll still bake fine, I promise. So we're mixing, we're mixing, it's thickening up, it's getting a little bit firmer like this. At this stage, you can see I still have some flour kind of around there, um, so this is not totally folded together yet, but this is actually the stage where we want to add our cup of chocolate chips. And I'm gonna give you a little tip here. Take some of your chocolate chips, like a little mini handful. I'm not gonna say eat them. <laughs> I was actually gonna say put them aside. And um, when we put it into our baking tray, um, it looks really nice and finished. If you actually take a couple chocolate chips and hand place them in and make them look pretty, it just makes it look more finished and like a little bit extra fancy. You don't have to do this, um, but I'm gonna do it just because it makes for like a prettier finished product but it's optional. Um, so I'm just putting a couple aside that I'm gonna top my, my batter with in a minute. Um, but the rest of them, I am just going to dump right in here. Again, don't let any of those go to waste. Um, and we are going to continue to gently fold this mixture. We want these, you know, we, <laughs> you might want think you might want like a big bite of chocolate, but like really we want these chocolate chips to be kind of evenly distributed throughout here. And you can see we've got like a nice cookie dough forming here. So we're scraping and we're pressing and we're folding. And again, we don't want to over mix this. So we're not going to do too much more here. But I can see all of the flour is pretty much incorporated in this point. Okay. Chocolate chips look like they're getting pretty evenly distributed in there also. There's no big clumps of chocolate. Everything's kind of evenly spread out. And I think for me, this is a good place where I want to stop so I don't end up over mixing anything. Um, 
everything looks good there. I've got my little handful of chocolate chips reserved um, that we're gonna use in a minute. So now I'm gonna show you guys step number four where I'm going to transfer this cookie dough into our um, prepared baking sheet. All right, step number four, we're almost done. This recipe, it's actually really easy, it's really quick, um, and it, it makes for a great finished product, but uh, it's, it's actually a pretty quick recipe. So we're already on step number four, um, which is transferring our dough to our prepared baking sheet. And when I say prepared, all that really means is that we put this liner in it. <laughs> so that part's done, we, we did that, and now we're just kinda kinda take our spatula, and look at that, that is like some good looking cookie dough. We're just gonna kind of plop it right down here. And like I said, it's going to be very thick, but that's normal, that's how it's supposed to be. Plop it right there. Um, so for this part, um, we're not just gonna bake it like this. We do want to kind of spread it out evenly so it bakes in one even layer. I find for this step, um, there's a couple different things you can do. If you have, uh, if you want to use clean hands to kind of press it, you can totally do that. Um, if you want to use your rubber spatula and kind of press it in there evenly, that's an option also. Um, one of my favorite baking tools that I do a lot with is this offset spatula. Um, this is what I'm going to use to kind of press and smooth. It might shift around a little bit, it's a little slippery, but. It, it, it makes for a, it's a really nice like smoothing kind of, uh, you know, evenly smoothing tool to get everything to one even layer. So I'm going to use my offset spatula here and just kind of press and you want to make sure you want one even layer. So you want to make sure like the corners are the same thickness as the center. Um, and you know, like I said, this is a really thick batter. You might find it is easier just to use your hands. Um, which you can totally do if that's what you want to do. So I'm just kind of, I'm, it actually, I'm finding it's working better to kind of hold the parchment on the side and then smooth this back and forth and get everything. And you can flip your pan around as you need to. Like this, we're making one layer here. Ooh, this looks so good already. Oh my gosh, it smells really good already. I'm gonna restrain myself from eating it because there is raw egg in it. So we don't wanna do that. We have to be patient and wait until it's baked. But it smells awesome. It smells kinda just like classic uh, chocolate chip cookie dough. You can smell that vanilla in there. Very good. So I've got my layer here. Everything is spread out evenly to the corners. You can see there. Um, and I think that's good. Again, we don't want to overwork this too much because then it'll, it won't be as chewy. It'll be more dense. So I'm going to stop myself from playing with it anymore. We're going to leave it there. And then I made a cookie cake re re uh, recipe recently. And, um, that's where I got this little insider tip to save some of the chocolate chips. And you just can like place them strategically. If there's any, if you notice any parts of your batter that look like there's no chocolate chips, it just makes it like when it bakes, it'll make a nice like finished looking um, surface on here where the chocolate chips look just kind of evenly spread out and nobody will know that you did it by hand. <laughs> so I'm just going to add mine in here and just gently press them. You don't want to press them all the way down. We want these to be our pretty kind of finishing chocolate chips for on top. So we're just gently pressing them in. And like I said, this step is optional, but I like to be extra fancy, so I'm going for it. And we are left with this lovely looking pan of cookie dough. Not too hard, right? Um, so now actually is the hardest part, which is waiting for it to bake, because I'm warning you, this is gonna smell really, really good. Um, <laughs> but we have to be patient. We have to put it in our oven, and we are gonna wanna bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes so we're jumping into step five here now which is bake for 25 to 30 minutes um you really want to be careful not to over bake this you don't want it to be dry and tough um you want a nice chewy you want nice chewy kind of softer chocolate chip cookie bars um so you're gonna you're gonna look for this to get kind of golden brown on top um not overdone so um it, that might for me i like once it gets to about 20 to 25 minutes i kind of 
crack the oven open, look and look at the color of it. If it looks like it's golden brown, pull it out. Um, if it looks like still kind of pale on top, you want to keep baking for a few more minutes. Just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, but, you know, everyone has their preference with chocolate chip cookies. Some people like them really soft um, and chewy. Other people like them more well done. So that it's kind of up to your preference. But the sweet spot is probably going to be about 25 to 30 minutes of baking at 325. So I am going to just move right into step number five. I'm going to throw these in the oven. I'm going to set my timer and um, hopefully next time you guys see me, I will have some beautiful golden brown cookie bars to show you. So here we go. So the oven timer just went off. I'm going to pull these out now. Hold on. Woo. Oh my gosh. You guys, these smell amazing. Um, look at these. So there you can see they are kind of golden brown on top and they've got all of our delicately placed chocolate chips there. Um, so now we just have to wait a little bit longer. We want these to cool completely. They're actually gonna keep baking a little bit as we take them um, out of the oven. And by the way, I ended up baking mine for actually a little bit over 30 minutes. Um, they weren't quite as golden brown as I wanted them to, but again, that's just my preference. Um, but we are going to put them on this wire rack now and we're going to wait for them to cool um, and then I'll show you guys how to pop them out and we'll slice them into bars and we will enjoy the fruits of our labor. <laughs> uh, this is going to be hard to let it just sit here but again it's, it's still very soft at this point point. Um, and that chocolate in there is probably molten hot so we're just going to let it cool um, and then I will check back in with you and show you how to cut your cookie bars. Yay! All right, you guys, I have my finished um, finished baking chocolate chip cookie bars. So now I'm going to remove them from the pan. They're nice and cooled now. And I'm going to cut them into nice little bars and we'll look at the inside um, and then they will be ready to eat. So I have this cutting board here. I'll move that up there. I will, like I said, it's nice and cool. And it, it should, with this parchment, you can see it will lift out very easily, just like that. That's perfect. Put that aside. You can do this. You can leave the parchment under it if you want. Um, actually, what I'm going to do really quick is just flip it and kind of peel it. Um, but we'll leave it there and then we can put it back into the, um, the pan if we want to. So I have a very sharp knife. This might be something for a grown up to do to cut these. Um, I'm thinking with the size of this, you guys can cut them, I mean, depending on how many servings you want. If you wanna do them in bars, you can maybe cut it in half and then cut them into like thinner bar type of um, bars like that. Or I think I'm gonna do more of like squares, but you can go rectangle with it if you want. Um, so I think I'm gonna go for 12, I'm gonna to try to get 12 little uh, servings out of this. So I'm going to, we will do four by three. Um, I'll do three cuts this way. There's one. And I'm just gonna peek at the inside. Oh, these look absolutely perfect. I'll show you in just a second. We'll do another cut this way. And they're nice and they're still like it's kind of a little crispy on top a little golden brown like i said but i can tell it's still nice and soft on the inside this is perfect oh we'll do four cuts this way so we'll get 12 ser servings out of this so i'll do one two three four beautiful Ta-da! So these are our finished chocolate chip cookie bars. Let me grab one and I will show you. Look at that. This looks amazing. These are totally um, cool now, but still nice and soft. Um, so for me in my oven, a little bit over 30 minutes is what ended up working well for this. Um, it also depends on your oven. Like I said, it depends on your preference. Some people like them really soft, or if you like them a little bit more crispy, go a little bit longer there. Um, but yeah, 325, a lower baking time or a lower baking temperature than you would normally bake chocolate chip cookies, but it works. They stay nice and soft. Um, and yeah, you're left with these really nice cookie bars. 
Um, so I'm gonna try one of these. Um, I hope you guys have good luck with these at home. And just like last time, send me pictures, uh, email or text me your, your finished pictures and I can post them. I, I love seeing the finished products of what you guys made last time. Uh, I was so proud that it made me really, really happy to see how good everybody's bread turned out. So hopefully you have good luck with these um, chocolate chip cookie bars also. But yeah, most importantly, I want you guys to enjoy and uh, try this recipe, you know, over and over. I, I hope it becomes one that you really love. Um, and uh, I will see you guys next time for virtual tween baking. Happy baking!